Alright, what's good boys? So I know this video ain't gonna do well, but I just needed to get out some sauce real quick, just cause I've had hella people asking me how I draw up my supply and demand zones, as well as a lot of people just sending me their charts, and they just have their zones marked up completely wrong, so I just need to make this to, you know, put some people on the right path. Now don't get me wrong, there are loads of ways to draw up your supply and demand zones, and this isn't just the definitive best way, because some people may prefer drawing them up different ways, and if that works for them, then... That's cool. But for me and many others, this is just the best way to draw them up. However, do your own research, do your own backtest and figure out what works for you because that's all that really matters. But anyway, let me just get to the charts real quick. So if you don't actually know what supply and demand is, let me just give you a quick rundown. A demand zone is basically where there's just an excess of buyers. So you'll see big pushes up like this where there's just not really any sellers. And these pushes will leave behind a demand zone, which I'll explain in a second. And for supplies, it's basically just the opposite. You just see an excess of sellers compared to buyers. And you can see this with just big pushes down where there's just not really any bullish candles. So you can just see that there's just way more sellers in the market. And this will often be preceded by a bullish candle and that will be the supply but I'll explain that in a second and if you're new to forex and this is confusing to you just stick with me because honestly once you know how to do it it's just really easy now there are some different types of supply and demand zones there's high probability and low probability zones but that's probably honestly a separate video because a lot of people get confused by that and need to know about fair value gaps etc but yeah, I'll leave that for another day for now I'm going to show you how to mark up these zones so first I'm going to go through a demand example so what you're looking for is a sudden push up like this this could just be one huge candle or some people may look for like three consecutive bullish candles and some may look for it to be like twice the size of the previous bearish candle but for me all i'm looking for is a big push up that clearly has some momentum that left behind some buyers so i know that if it comes back to that zone there'll be more buyers to push it up once again but yeah all you need to do is find an area where it started pushing up and just look at the previous bearish candle and just mark it up like that you literally just want to mark up the bearish candle before it now some people will mark it up with just the body but like that doesn't work to me because sometimes you'll see bodies like this for me i just want to mark up the entire candle give it some room now you'll often see other demand zones uh just like this one or if we continue going we'll see other demand zones be created such as this one however i'm just trading off reactions at the zone like if candles aren't showing any rejections at the zone then why would I take it? And as a scalper, I gotta be pretty quick on my toes and think quick. Obviously, we're not just taking every demand zone, even if it shows the most beautiful rejections in the world. For example, this one, I would never take. There's some stuff such as breaks of structure that I need to see, but just some simple stuff we can notice straight away. We are currently reacting off of a supply zone. We can see here, this is a big push down and left a supply zone. It got tapped into and instantly started rejecting. And as we see more momentum down, we're not getting any reactions off this zone anyway, and it just broke it. So they're the zones that we don't want to be trading enough but once again i'm just keeping it simple i'm just trying to show you how to mark them up so i'm not going to go into too much detail with that for example you may see both of these zones and you may be wondering which one you want to take and you can base that on rejections like this if you see one or multiple candles reject off the zone this hard then it's likely rejecting due to the demand zone and it's going to push up so you could get your entry around here wherever go for whatever risk reward you like and it'll often hit TP pretty quick. Sometimes you might have to wait longer than other times, but for the most part, TP will get hit fairly quickly because these demand zones are pretty strong. And like I said, because we're just trading off reactions at the zone, we're not gonna wait for it to come all the way back down to here or anything. This zone may just never get tapped. And we can see if we keep going ahead, it just kind of left, never filled in these gaps down here, never tapped into the zone. So this zone was the winning one. All right, I will admit I went on a bit of a tangent there. This video is just supposed to be about how to draw up supply and demand zones, but we're gonna go back to that right now. So back with another demand example this is one thing that might be confusing at first but trust me you'll get it uh so for me if i see a setup like this where the bottom wick of the bullish candle goes below that of the bearish candle instead of marking just the bearish candle like this I will also take in that lower wick. This is just to allow the entire move to get in. So if it comes all the way down to here and then wicks up and gives the most beautiful rejection, that's still valid to me. Um, sometimes it just gives it a little extra room and that can validate a whole lot of setups because I've noticed a lot of setups that go this far down into the zone and still win. But let me get one more example anyway. Actually, I see one right here. This one never got tapped into, but this is clearly a demand zone. We see this big push up right here. We mark it up. And instead of marking it up just like this, we'll also take in this bottom wick right here. And yeah, that's about it on that. But anyway, let me get some supply examples right now because... I haven't even talked about that yet. All right, so here I have an example of a supply setup. Once again, I'm not going to be going through why I would or wouldn't take the setup. I'm just showing you how to draw them. So we see a big push down right here. And once again, just simply draw out the previous bullish candle and also that upper wick right there. And yeah, that's literally it. Let me get a few more examples. 
such as up here. Just simple, man. Literally just draw out that candle. If it tapped into this, then that's just a possible beautiful trade. But once again, we go off reaction to the zone. Like here, once we see it start rejecting, that could be an entry. And even as it starts rejecting off these supply zones, it will create even more supply zones. And once again, never came up to it, but that's a valid supply zone right there. And even though this is only two candles, we can see this candle right here. This is on NAS 100. This is 22 pips. That's one big push down. A lot of people will have missed out on that move and it will get in once it taps back into the supply zone. So that's what that's valid in my opinion. Once again, right here, this is a low probability setup. Take this upper wick of the next candle. Once again, we're not just taking in this, we're taking in this upper wick as well. But once again, just didn't get tapped into. But these are just examples of how to draw them up anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Also, I just want to talk about a lot of the time you'll see massive zones like this. And a lot of the time, I don't like these zones. As you can see, it's just very wide. It's just really not nice looking. You may be able to tell that even if you're new, that this is just such a big zone that it's not really ideal to trade off. And once again, these can hit. All these setups can hit, but, but a lot of them I wouldn't take for various reasons. But yeah, this actually did kind of go down off it but that's not the point because you can also see that we are hitting off this demand right here these kind of just move the market completely yeah that was just another thing i wanted to mention because a lot of the time you'll see zones like these i wouldn't even bother marking this up because it's just a massive zone don't really like it all right so i hope this helps somebody but if you have any questions you can leave it in the comments or if you want to send me an example just send me on instagram or over discord and i will respond so yeah if you've got any questions just ask on there and just tell me if there's any other videos you want to see kind of like this because over like the last two weeks of December, I won't be able to trade anyway. So I'll probably put a few of these types of videos out. So just ask me what you want to see, whether it's about high probability and low probability setups or just confluences I like to see in my trades. But to be fair, in a lot of my live trading videos, I will break down my trades at the end. And you can kind of see what confluences I look for before taking the trade. So if you're interested in them, they're just all over my channel. But yeah, man, trades like these just be getting thrown all the time. It's actually crazy. Plan demand is the truth, bro. I'd recommend all of you to just backtest this really get it down and then from there the main part will just be psychology you won't get it down straight away um you'll need to practice it you need to see which setups hit the most what confluences you like to see and then just work on it from there but until you're trading in the real market whether it's on a demo account or a live account you don't really get that experience so if there's one thing i recommend about everything just come to the markets every day boys like, honestly come to markets every day practice get that grinding and yeah we're gonna make it boys 100 but yeah i appreciate you boys for watching uh follow the instagram join the discord like and subscribe that's one and yeah comment if you've got any questions but yeah i'll see you boys next week probably but yeah see ya man peace